some of Australia's newest residents are taking to the stage for a production with big ambitions. The group of refugees and asylum seekers is hosting an interactive play using their own lives as content in a bid to break down barriers. The show, which is being performed in Brisbane, is hoping to encourage audience participation and empathy. Alison Horn reports. Mornings in Joyce Taylor's house are always busy. Today, she's cooking eggs and toast for her two sons. Sit down. You can't eat standing. A ritual repeated by parents across Australia every day. But for this mum, breakfast is a luxury. I was always hungry. It's a blessing to be able to go and turn a tap on and get water. Joyce Taylor grew up in a Guinean refugee camp after fleeing war-torn Liberia. Hers was a childhood with little food, water or security. You see people getting killed. People don't eat for days. People getting raped at night. You, you just never know. Life was just chaotic and scary, actually. So tell me about this photo. Where was this taken? It was taken in the camp. The refugee camp? Yeah. And I'm not for sure. nine years, she waited before finally being sent to Australia as a refugee. I remember getting on the plane thinking, wow, my life is, that's it. Life is going to be perfect. I'm going to cook you a meal that we usually did in the camps. Now Joyce is drawing on those childhood memories for the small stage. I've always enjoyed sharing my story. People go to therapy, people do things, but telling my story gives me an extra piece. She said, Joyce left Hers well, so is one, one of several world. moving accounts featured in a play called The Village. Refugee and asylum seeker issues are big and they're constantly brought up again and again. And I think we were trying to sort of unplug that a little bit and have a look at the human side of it. My name is Akram and I'm from the Hazara people. Hazaras are one of the most persecuted ethnic and religious minorities. Mohammed Akram arrived in Australia in 2012 by boat. It was 10 p.m. We arrived to the shore. The crashing sounds of the waves were scary. I was looking to the ocean when they told me, go, 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 get in the boat. Getting the audience physically involved is key to the theatrical experience. It is difficult because uh, what you're talking about is you're sharing your experiences that, that, that I wish that no one should ever, ever suffer, you know? The people smugglers, the agents, they charge a lot of money. And, and, and in my case, the only way that I could afford the journey was that my father uh, to sell the house that we were living in and uh, my mom to sell the jewellery or any, save, uh, any savings that we had and to borrow money so that we can pay the smuggler to get us to a place that is safe for me. If you can just jump up, let's just do it in a semicircle here. Director Todd McDonald developed the play to build tolerance and understanding around a politically charged subject. It's not uh, in any way dumbed down or, or patronising, but the focus was wanting to talk to kids who were at high school who were still forming their opinions about the world. And the sea just hurled this boat around. Small groups of teenagers take part in the interactive stories. So what I want you guys to do is all get involved, grab a bucket, and let's take it to the camp. These boys are recreating Joyce Taylor's daily hour-long walk to get fresh water. You have a pump or two in a big camp. So that means if you live further down from the pump, you have to wake up early in the morning. And if you're sleeping, there will be a million people waiting on that line. It's a scenario many of the teenagers have never even imagined, let alone experienced. You know, they're just trying to survive every day and just get a little bit of water. It made me feel like, um, like in the heart, like upset mm. and th that this shouldn't happen. It made us be a part of their journey and what it felt like to be a refugee or a asylum seeker. I was shocked that some of these kids were so moved. It feels like it is literally making the world a better place when you, when you actually hear someone who can tell their story and you watch school students take that in and they are changed by it. 
There's a few of the kids who have some African background in them. They came walk to me and say, is it okay if I give you a cuddle? And they're boys. Boys don't give cuddles at that age. So I was really impressed and thought, wow, yeah. Touch the fresh minds. They're going to go home and see things differently. For the actors, the village is their chance to break down barriers. The only way that you can bring a change in the conversation uh, and the narratives about, around these people, about, around asylum seekers, is that you engage with the public. And celebrate their new home. Now I know my kids can have a better life. And I can drink water, <laughs> clean water from the tap. Australia's home. And home is where you find peace, happiness. <laughs> Alison Horn in Brisbane.